going on guys? So I have an interesting project that I'm going to take on tonight and what it involves is kind of similar to something I've already done but I did it to my toolbox. This time I'm going to do it to the truck so hang tight. This is going to be a cool video. Alright so you may recall that quite a while back I installed this 12 volt outlet on the back of my toolbox that would give me auxiliary power to anything that requires 12 volts and has a cigarette lighter style adapter that plugs into it. Well, this is great back here and it's actually come in handy multiple times. But what I'm gonna be doing today is adding one of those to the back of the truck because I think that's a much more practical place for it to be. Okay, so in the back of the truck here, I have a perfect spot for it. It's right here, it's right where a mount hole kind of already is and it's not used by anything. So what I'm gonna do is actually wallow this hole out a little bit larger and I have this that will mount right here. So this will give me 12 volt power anytime I need to connect something like maybe a small portable refrigerator back here or maybe some power tools or just something that might require either a 12 volt source or a cigarette lighter style adapter, perhaps even charging a phone back here. And it's going to be connected to the same upfitter switch that I have connected to the one I put on the toolbox. So I'll be able to power up both sources off of one upfitter switch. And that specific switch gives me 25 amps of relayed power back here. So I'm not really going to need to add anything additional to it. If you haven't seen my truck in a while back here, you can see I have my built right rack here. I have all of my air compressor connections right here. So I have access right at the back corner. I have my gauge and regulator. And I also have this little ammo can that sits on a bracket back here in the back that I can load stuff up in. Or maybe my extra cords for my Viar pump, things like that. But comes in really handy and of course that's my seven-way connector for my fifth wheel hitch so right here I'm gonna have a 12 volt connection that I can plug into whatever I need to for 12 volt power okay so I've pretty much wired up everything I just have my two spade connections back here that will connect to the back of the plug right here with some heat shrink connectors and then on this side I'm going to tap into the wire that I have feeding the other plug about midway up the side rails and splice into that one as well. And I'm going to use some heat shrink butt connectors for that. So this is going to be a really quick install. I guess the part that's scary to most people is actually drilling out the hole, but to me it's not really that big of a deal. What I will do is remove the back tail light assembly so I can see what's back here to make sure that I don't have any problems or that there's not some type of an access hole back here that this is actually used for. And I often wonder why all the major brands have these kind of random holes that are placed throughout the back of these trucks. You would anticipate that it would be for some type of a extra part or some type of an accessory, but I haven't really found any that specifically work here. My only theory would be that these would be designed for that little bed extender that's an option on some of these trucks. Maybe it butts up against this rail right here and you use these holes for access to that. But I don't have that, don't plan on getting it, and this works better for me anyways. Okay, so I have the light out and you can see that hole is easily accessible here. I may actually put it a little bit below this hole, maybe down right there, simply because it's a little bit more difficult to wallow out a hole when you don't have a place for your starting bit to get going. If I do it up here, I will likely use a step bit if I have one big enough, but that would actually make things a little bit easier for me. And then that wire can simply drop straight down there and I can fish it through, which would give me really good access to getting it to the side of the truck over here where the other connection goes through the bed right in front of the dually fender up here. And I can just feed it along over the dually fender and access it right there. Okay, so I just measured the diameter of this and it's right under one and one eighth. So I should be able to use the one and one eighth setting on this step bit that I have and simply drill out that hole right there to one and one eighth. A little tip that you can use to help stop you if you want to make sure you get to that point, you don't go over that size, is to take some masking tape and simply find your marking here and stop yourself with a piece of masking tape right here. So when you get to the masking tape, 
you know you need to stop. Just like that. Well, that was unfortunate. The nice thing about an aluminum bed is that it drills rather easily and the hole doesn't need to be prepped really because it is aluminum so it's not going to rust. So that's really cool. You know guys, I remember when I put cab lights in on my 2011 F250 Lariat and everyone was kind of shocked that I was willing to just drill through the roof of the truck and everyone was worried of course about leaks. But really the approach to doing any of this is just committing to it and getting it done. If you hesitate too long on drilling a hole, you will really psych yourself out of doing it and you can really delay or stop a project from happening. So in my case, I just do my first drill, I get it done, and I'm committed. Okay, so here's my plug. There's a little trim panel that goes over the back of it that'll actually make it look really nice and clean and probably factory looking. Then I got a little retaining nut that'll go on the back side where the light is, so basically through the back and it will tighten over it. But that's what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect my two connectors here. Red will go positive. Black will go negative. Red positive, black negative. Now I'm simply going to pull this wire through the hole that I created, or at least enlarged, and I'm going to put this right here just like that then i'm going to take my retaining nut that i have here i'm going to feed it over the wire so i can get behind where this is so you can see back here i fed the wire over just going to thread it onto the back like that put two screws in right here Okay, so I flipped this around simply because I want this flap to go this way if it's left open for whatever reason so it doesn't get caught here in the tailgate if it's closed. So I'm going to drill out these two holes. And I'm going to use two stainless steel screws to secure it into place. Well, I know they're not black, but I can always touch them up with some black paint. There we go. So we're done with the outside portion. I think that looks really good. Once I hit these with some black paint, I think they'll look even better. But that is a perfect spot for it. And since I'm not using those two holes for anything else, this really gives me the perfect place to connect whatever I need back here. Okay, so now that I have my wire back here, I'm just going to feed it down the same area that the wiring for the factory lights are. And that should come out the bottom of the truck. And I can see it coming out right there. There we go. I repositioned it behind the light here. I'm going to clean out some of the uh, shavings down there and in the bed of the truck here in a second. But after I do that, I can reinstall the light. Okay, maybe hard to see, but I routed the wire down here over the fender on the inside down here to here, and I used the same wire that I had ran underneath the truck to connect it to, which is back here. You can see it right there. And I'm going to splice into that. All right, so before we wrap it up, I want to bring up something that is often overlooked in most installation videos. You see people run wires to light bars. You see them run them to all sorts of different things, but oftentimes you have no idea what type of wire they're using. 
First of all, you want to make sure that the wire is the proper gauge. You want to make sure that it's a thick enough wire to be able to withstand the amount of amps that will be traveling through it. Otherwise, you could fry your wire and potentially have a fire issue. The second issue, and this is a huge one that people generally don't think about, when they go online or wherever they go to buy their wire, they don't pay attention to what type of wire they're buying. And in some cases, people run power leads with a type of wire called CCA, which stands for copper clad aluminum. And it's simply aluminum wiring with this copper coating around the outside of it. And that wire will corrode and it will fall apart, become brittle, and pretty much turn into a powder over time. And it can cause a fire. So you never want to use CCA wire in any location that could even potentially get damp, humid, or moist. The wire I always use is 99.99 or 100% oxygen free copper or OFC and it's also going to tell you that it's marine wire or it's marine rated. So you're always going to want to use oxygen free copper wire if you're going to be running any type of wiring throughout a vehicle and that is incredibly important. You just don't want to run into a scenario where your wire starts corroding because you wanted to save a few bucks and you got CCA or copper clad aluminum wire. So just keep that in mind. Okay so we have all the wires ran, everything's connected and this is going to be our first test. I have this little portable freezer that was gifted to me from a friend and it has 12 volt power. It also can run off of AC power, but one thing that makes this really nice is that it is a freezer and it runs off of DC power and you can plug it into a cigarette lighter adapter. This thing only pulls about two amps, so it pulls hardly any power. 25 amp circuit is more than enough to power it. I'm gonna plug this connection in right here. And then I'm gonna take this end and I'm gonna plug it into my newly installed 12 volt jack on the side. I'm gonna make sure that my 12 volt plug upfitter switch is on, and I'm gonna remote start the truck which powers up the upfitters. And you can see instantly, I got power. It was really cool. It's running already, no problems at all. I have it plugged right into the side here. That is really cool. Whenever I'm done, I can simply power this off, unplug it, cover up my hole right there, and I'm good to go. This is a really, really simple install, especially if you have upfitter switches. If you don't, you can still accomplish it, and I would generally recommend you run your wires from the battery and hook it to a relay with the switch inside of the vehicle. But if you do have upfitter switches, it definitely makes this job significantly easier, especially if you already have wires running to the back. And because I had wires already ran to one of these that I put on my toolbox midship, this is now gonna give me a plug right at the back of the truck. So if we're tailgating, if we're going out and doing something on the beach and we wanna cool something down, or even while we're driving over there, I can throw a cooler in the bed. I can simply connect it to the uh, 12 volt plug right here, and we're good to go. Anyways, guys, I will put a link in the description if you're interested in doing something like this to your vehicle. I'll also put a link to the wire that I use, simply so you use the right type of wire. You also have to keep in mind not just the type of wire you're using, but the gauge of wire you're using to make sure it can handle the right amount of current based on the length of wire that you have. And there are several charts all over the internet you can look up, and it's simply a wire gauge chart, which will tell you how much the maximum amount of power you can put through a wire is to power certain things and how thick that wire needs to be. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.